Uh, I'm Ariel and I will be performing at the Thelemic Symposium this year in Oxford, which I'm excited about and I hope to see you there. I'm here with Ariel. Can, Ariel, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, the kind of things that you do? Okay, well, I am a magician, obviously, or I wouldn't be here doing this interview. Um, I'm also an artist and for me the two are very linked and become more and more blended uh, throughout my life. Uh, I often uh, invoke when I'm creating artworks and um, because I'm also a performer, uh, public and private ritual gets uh, blended and blurred often. Uh, I perform in a ritualistic manner and yeah, I find uh, any sort of purely magical work, if there's such a thing for me anymore, is, uh, uh, you know, feeds over into my artwork and vice versa. Um, I am very much a multimedia artist in that I, I work in many different fields um, with visual art like painting, uh, bronze, wood and clay sculpture, um, recently jewellery, so a little mini Baphomet there, <laughs> and, um, and um, yeah, but also music uh, with violin and voice and sometimes electronica and um, dance, uh, theatre, writing, uh, so all these different uh, fields of magical art tend to cross-pollinate each other um, so I might uh, you know write something that then turns into a poem that then turns into lyrics for a song uh, or you know or the other way around which then may become the soundtrack of a film or a piece of theater um, which then you know may inspire a sculpture it, it uh, just keeps circling around so um, I sort of think in terms of the arts maybe the old um, Jack of all trades, master of none doesn't necessarily apply so much because uh, if you have the right kind of attitude to it, all art is sort of actually the same, the same trade. It's just uh, different media. I'm not so good at maths. People call me a polymath sometimes, but I think I'm more of a, a poly arts kind of person. Poly. <laughs> I, I was kind of, I, my initial characterization of you was as a, a performance artist, would that be kind of correct? I, I think you're a performance artist in the sense that that's got, that's how I first met you, I, I think. It was as a, I don't know, is that, is that, that a cultural thing in Brighton? I, it might not have been the first time I ever met you, but it's one of the first performances of yours where you were kind of, actually they asked me, did you know this, right? That they asked me, he's gonna hang from a tree upside down and recite <laughs> some magical spells and everything, obviously within that sort of uh, shamanic tradition or dinic tradition or whatever. They actually asked me to advise what tree you should hang from. <laughs> there are several possibilities. And I said, yeah. oh, don't, don't do that tree because that's, that's called the Widowmaker tree, right? You know, it's always <laughs> falling down. <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah. you owe you some are possibly, you know, they, they use quite a stout tree, you know, and it's quite, it's quite a, quite a feat really. So yeah, I, that, I, that's where I started off. I thought you were a performance artist, but within the kind of occult tradition, really, would that be a fair, fair sort of summary? Because that covers well, all sorts of things. Thank you because that, uh, thank you because that seemed a very sturdy and stable tree and I, um, <laughs> <laughs> Rather you idea. than me, I say, you know, I think you were very brave. Yeah. But I think that's I, what I have, performance I have actually, do, yeah. I did actually marry myself back in the year 2000, so <laughs> even if I had made a widow, I'd still, uh, I would have to half survive to do that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, in terms of being uh, primarily a performance artist, it's interesting, I guess that's uh, where we first made contact, but um, 
I think a lot more people actually know me as a visual artist, like know my uh, drawings and, and paintings um, because of my publications with Fulger and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm I'm equally a performer. Um, I wouldn't say I'm more one than the other. Um, but yeah, I do love um, I do love live performance because it's uh, you know it's very visceral and it's very um, uh, present and immediate and um, more and more these days, I really like arts that are, that are live and are three-dimensional because, uh, you know, the world's becoming so screen-based. Hi out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's... Um, you got visitors, yeah. you've got an audience already, you know, <laughs> in the room with you. Good, no problem. <laughs> so, look, how did you... You, you must have gone on... A, 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 a journey to get to, to where you are you know how, how, how did you what is your journey I, I you know how did you get to first of all how do you get to Britain in the first place are you kind of what's your background and how did that bring you to where you are now you know what's your life story if you like in a <laughs> in a few minutes uh, well, I was doing. A, I'm Australian, and I was doing a lot of um, a lot of ritual theatre and musical performances and exhibitions and stuff over there, um, and that was always a lot of fun. Um, and you know, I had a good community of like minds to work with over there. But after a while, it felt a bit limited in terms of audience and culture because uh, well, there's so many more people over here, and so there's I. And by over here, I don't just mean Britain, I mean, you know, Europe. And um, yeah, it's just um, because there's such so many more people and so much more cultural diversity and so much of a, a, a history of arts and magic, I'm finding it's, it's a lot uh, easier to find, um, you know, more people who are into the same weird shit as I am. So um, <laughs> yeah. That's great. And um, yeah, so I was going back and forth for uh, 20 years or so between Australia and Europe and England and, and, and you know, sometimes America. And, um, you know, eventually that uh, began to wear me down, sort of spending, <laughs> having this split life between uh, two continents or sometimes three or more. And um, yeah, eventually I got this uh, little chalet in the woods in Belgium, which I am now using as a base to uh, travel around Europe and perform and then go back to my little chalet in the forest when I want to um, have some time with nature and paint and sculpt. And I'm uh, creating an esoteric sculpture garden there with uh, large deity statues too. Yeah, I think I've seen some of the the films and uh, stills that you've done from, because you've settled, as you say, in Belgium, in mm. in the country area or a kind of uh, urban area. Yeah, yeah. It's, it looks very yeah, rural, I'm, sort of woody, yeah, I mean, and quite wild, and out in the middle of nowhere. But uh, you know, just, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice. Um, well, in in the middle in the middle of nowhere, as much as you can be in Central Europe. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm actually only uh, you know only just under two hours away from Brussels on the train. Right. So it's yeah, but it's um, yeah, I have a little patch of forest surrounded by farmland and other forests. So yeah, that's lovely. And um, but it also means you know easy access to sort of anywhere in in Europe and um, and England as well. Um, sure. So, and yeah, yeah, I, I think you do fun. workshops there and stuff. Let's say what I'll do when I'll share some images if, of yours from the place and uh, of yeah. your artwork as well on, on, on this when we eventually put it together and, and everything, if that's all right, because there's uh, yeah. some very interesting stuff there. And so you're creating a sort of whole environment, magical environment, a sculpture garden. And people come yes. and visit you there and do encounters and weekends and intensives, is that right? Um, not so much yet. I mean, I'm still setting up the place and I'm still creating the sculpture garden, so it's not generally mm. open to the public as yet. Um, I usually, I've done a few other ones, but generally I just do one uh, gathering a year, which is um, for Lammas, so it's coming up quite soon. 
Um, I've just actually put up the website for that. Um, but yeah, it's like 20 to 30 people with, you know, rituals in the daytime and um, uh, workshops in the daytime rather and, and rituals at night and sometimes some performances and, you know, everyone gets involved. And yeah, that's a lot of fun. And um, yeah, eventually uh, when I've got some more sculptures and things set up there, I, I will open it um, as a more general sort of... Uh, summer sculpture garden kind of thing <laughs> well what do the locals think do they are there any locals <laughs> are, <laughs> and are they involved in in that or do they come and see the sculptures no no not as yet it's not at not that yet. point where it's okay. open but i mean it's it's mostly farmers around there um it's a bit of a redneck area in a way so um and i'm trying but i don't yet speak french very well so um, yeah, I don't really know many locals. So there's a few uh, like mines I've found in the area, but it's mostly from Brussels and the, the north part of uh, Belgium, to where most of my friends around there are. But I have, uh, you know, because Belgium's so small and central, I also have, you know, visitors from other countries quite often because, um, you know, I mean, right. I can get I can get from my place to London in four hours if I take the Eurostar. So. It's, um, the modern world is a miraculous thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, but oh, any, even, even by land, you know, there's like uh, six different countries that I can access in a matter of hours from where no, I right, you're, you're kind of in the interzone in a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, anyway, so we're, we're talking about your appearance at the Ceramic Symposium. So, do you want to say, have you got any thoughts on, well, let's start on this, uh, on, say, Salima? Uh, have you got an approach? I know it kind of probably does figure a little bit Crowley's philosophy of Thelema. Do you want to say something about that? How you sure, approach yeah. it? What do you think it is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I've always been very interested in ancient Egyptian magic. So there's a big crossover with that, particularly. Um, I also really love the, the figure of Babylon and all she represents and, you know, her. Um, her history, her history rather in you know Ishtar and Inanna as well, and um, that's that's what I'm actually focusing on for my performance at the Thelemic Symposium because I saw there was already some uh, Babylon uh, evocation stuff going on, and I thought, oh, that that uh, seems like a, a fitting thing to do. I have I have material um, related to that, um, some of which I haven't done for quite a while. But um, yeah, I thought it would be interesting to, to go back into that and um, do a Babylon evocation uh, with some of my music uh, and some movement which, uh, which relates to this, uh, this goddess. Right. So do you, have a, do you have a view on kind of what magic is then? Do you have a sort of pet definition of magic that fits with, with that? I mean, you say you're... You, you came in on this call with saying, I'm a magician. So what is magic? The okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always a tricky thing to summarize, isn't it? But it's, um, yeah. well, I mean, uh, the whole thing, I mean, of course, uh, since we're talking Thelema here, of course, the, you know, Crowley's definition, I do resonate with to some extent. Um, as in, you know, creating change accordance to will, um, of course, true will. But uh, I, I also find that personally, I've been veering less and less towards results oriented magic and more, um, uh, more into devotional practices. And I guess the where it overlaps with my artistic practice, um, that seems to fit in a in a way, um, I I used to do you know a lot of a lot of more kind of like spell casting work and things you know with specific results in mind, whereas now it's more like, uh, you know, if I want to change something in my world, I will you know I might do a ritual for that or do some artwork, um, but it's more to bring in a particular kind of energy. Um, that aligns with that that intention of change rather than 
a specific I want this particular thing at this particular juncture or whatever because I, I actually you know I believe that the gods um, know what I need better than I do I might know what I want but that's not necessarily in the bigger picture um, going to be the best thing so it's like you know say say I want better communications uh, in something I'm doing then I might uh, call Hermes um, but I you know I won't do anything more specific than that you usually I mean occasionally if if I feel that something really warrants it but generally it's more like uh, working with different deities or different spirits according to the different kind of energies I want to call into my life at different times and um, also there's also more and more um, subconscious stuff because I think the the arts are really interesting for that sometimes I'll do you know deliberate pieces where I'm actually composing a work and I have a specific sort of intention in mind or I want to paint a particular deity but um, other times I you know I won't even think I'll just go into trance or use some kind of gnosis you know some breath work or some chanting or something and and then you know before and it was a during creation of artwork sometimes and then and the, the creation of the artwork itself is often, you know, is is a form of gnosis for me often, and um, you know, I'll just let the imagery emerge when I'm painting and sculpting sometimes without uh, consciously steering it. And I'll find because I've done a lot of um, a lot of more intentional and conscious magic in the past that things will come through from that. It's like once you start setting the gears in the motion in motion with specific ritual, I think that um, things just start to unfold in your life in a, in a kind of you know pattern of, of fate and then um you can just sort of tune into that and um yeah move with it so it's a sometimes quite a subconscious process to see what comes through so so the pictures are kind of like the manifestation of a of a magical ritual or or like they're there to sort of are they like sigils in the sense that they they make it happen or or they're the manifestation of of the ritual you're doing would you say does that make sense um, <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely um sometimes but like yeah i mean if i am doing a specific ritual but i don't do so much you know specific intention work uh in recent years usually but um yeah i guess they can be manifesting things from you know rituals i did years ago or even decades ago um but also there yeah sometimes it's just directly from the subconscious i think it's it's interesting with the whole sigil magic thing in terms of like uh spare presented this whole idea of using a sigil to take your intentions to a subconscious state to then be able to manifest them without your conscious mind uh, interfering with that and your lust of results. But I think sometimes with with using art as magic, uh, you can kind of bypass some of that process because you can directly access the subconscious with the art. So things just come through without without it, you know, being a conscious intention in the first place to then have to take back to the subconscious to, <laughs> to manifest. So it's, a, yeah, it's almost like you're, you're bringing things uh, more directly through, um, you know, you're opening yourself up to certain currents and energies. So there is some kind of direction, but then, yeah, then just allowing the, the subconscious or even the super consciousness to, um, you know, to come through. Okay. Well, with that in mind, could you sort of walk us through or, or describe the presentation? With most of the people I said, can you give us a clue to what you're going to talk about? But as yours is a performance, so you're not going to really be giving away anything if you just describe it, because they still have to be there to get the experience. But could you yeah. step us through that, what, what exactly you're going to do and what, what we can expect? Uh, this is for the evening uh, sort of cabaret spot, social spot and performance space that we're doing as well. If you could do that. Yeah, well, um, I don't even know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> but um, um, I guess it will uh, probably solidify more between now and then as well. Um, but yeah, it's um, essentially going to be uh, invoking uh, Babylon, or rather evoking Babylon. Um, 
with music primarily, with violin and voice, and some. Uh, I'll be probably using some backing electronica that I've created in the past, um, related to to Babylon, um, working with other musicians, and um, yeah, and also doing some some moving some some movement. Um, recently, I've also been uh, doing some uh, live sculpture on myself on my face and stuff with uh, clay so I, I might bring in that element because I've been enjoying that um, yeah I, I'm not sure yet entirely <laughs> what I'm going to do but it's going to be uh, it's going to be with Babylon I know some of the music I'm going to use um, some of it will be um, improvised as usual and some will be more structured and composed I could I could say a few, one of the more composed songs that I'm going to use, I could, um, I could speak some of the, the lyrics as uh, poetry, if you like. Oh, I really love that. Yeah, I'm sure it would, would be great. Yeah, go for it. Okay. <clears throat> Daleth, Empress, you redress the wasteland. Daleth, Empress sorceress divinely enfleshed you impress yourself upon me upon my feet the land i walk upon my tongue the food i eat your tresses the trees your breath the breeze through an open door daleth you are a door daleth i adore E. O Daleth, Empress, adorations to thee. O Daleth, Empress, reverence to thee. O Daleth, Sorceress, deference to thee in all your majesty. It's actually the first time I've done that as a poem rather than a um, a song with the violin, so I was sort of unable, unsure how to translate it um, at one point. But, um, yeah. Yeah, no, that was song that, and violin. That's right. yeah. It gives yeah. an idea of, of the words at least. Yeah, well, I was going to I was going to ask what what who is Babylon or what does Babylon mean to you, but I guess you've done that right that's part of it you, you say it's the door the doorway and stuff so maybe we should, yeah i don't even want to add you need to add any more to that who is babylon i guess that's what we learn from the performance from other different yeah yeah it's lots of different views but yeah great that's okay so we're gonna enjoy that at the forthcoming symposium do you want to talk for a, a it's about you've you've got several books out now, quite a lot of books. You've written quite a few books now. I, th I think I'm right in saying. Yeah, yeah. About at least half a dozen. What's your What's your kind of favourite book at the moment that you'd like people to look at? Um. Well, I guess it makes sense to talk about the one that's just been published. Um, <laughs> that's, that's one of the only two that are also still in print. Um, yeah. So that's. Um, a Sejesus that just came out last year from Grail Press um, and that is actually a it started off as a collection of esoteric poetry and um, then I started writing in prose well semi-prose kind of poetic prose about the magic of language so yeah there ended up being a lot of um, a lot of writing about um, about the magic of language but also you know, using the magic magic of language, like it's uh, it's quite a self-referential piece, I guess, because it's a book about the magic of language, and it's also a book of the magic of language. Um, so you know, there's a lot of wordplay, there's a lot of, um, but there's also a lot of sort of exploration of, um, yeah, how language affects reality, and I particularly explore. Uh, the vibrational properties of language rather than just um, you know the abstract more abstract kind of intellectual like not just the meanings of words but how embodied speech actually you know the vibrations of it affect reality and how in more ancient languages uh, words were actually created because of 
you know, vibrations. It was like people would have gone, you know, okay, what is this? And tried to find a sound that had the right vibration that expressed that. And now uh, in languages like English, where it's been filtered through a whole lot of generations and, you know, uh, mixing up different uh, language roots and stuff, now, now we have, we've sort of been removed from those vibrational properties that you get in things like Sanskrit or Hebrew and, um, or ancient Greek. So, um, yeah, I've been exploring that, but also that the way English has its own magic because of that, um, that strange, um, that it's such a kind of hybrid, um, mongrel uh, patchwork of different languages and exploring those different roots and where all the different vibrations come from is a has its own magic especially uh, when it's expressed through poetry or song um, the book uh, as well as being profusely illustrated visually it, it has a um, album with it too because uh, after a while i realized this is actually incredibly ironic where i'm i'm writing a lot about um, how the vibrational properties of language are much more evident when it's um, orated or um, even sung um, than written on a page. And I thought, well, it's ironic if I'm only writing about that in a book. So because a lot of the, um, a lot of the verses in the book, I'd already created songs from them or used them in lyrics in jams with people, um, yeah, I decided to put together an album with it as well. So that always also comes with the book. So yeah, it's kind of a multimedia tome of um, you know, music, poetry, writing and uh, drawings and paintings. It sounds amazing. Uh, I'll put details of that up on, on, you know, and edit it in so people can see the, the title and maybe a couple of pages of that. Um, okay, great. Yeah, with the link. Yeah. That sounds great, you know, very and much on it. I'll have copies of it at the symposium. Of oh, course. well, there you go. Yeah, you get a signed yes. copy. Uh, <laughs> that would be a nice thing. Okay, well, look, I think, as they say, I've given you a good going over. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any final thing you'd like to say before we sign off? Or um, love is the law, love under will. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay, Oriel. Uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law then and uh looking forward very much to meet seeing you soon at the symposium and thank you very much for talking to us about you know your contribution <laughs> Kati.